Hello and welcome to Gaffey's Grinds. My name is Mr. Gaffey and in these short videos I will be taking some concepts from Lever Cert Chemistry, breaking them down, trying to help you understand them better and then doing some practice questions. Some general tips for watching these videos. If you're not using your phone to watch this video then ensure that it is uh, turned off or put in a different room so, this, so that it doesn't distract you. Uh, don't close any other tabs that you have open. Again, any notifications that pop up or um, other things that can easily distract you are going to stop you from learning here. The most important thing is I'm going to be asking you to do tasks, activities, questions. It's really, really important you do these. I can't make you them. Do, I can't make you do them. It is your choice, but you're not going to learn as much if you don't do the questions. Okay, so it's really important that you try and do the questions when I ask you. Okay, so this is our first video on the topic of organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a really, uh, really big topic in the Lean Start uh, course, so there's going to be many videos in this section. Um, but today we're going to look at the formation of crude oil. Okay, so crude oil, the story begins in the ocean. So in the ocean, there lives microscopic plants and called algae. And they typically tend to live uh, near the surface of the ocean. And the reason they live near the surface is because they are plant-based, which means that they use the sun for energy. So they are plants and they are able to take in and store energy from the sun. So energy is transferred from the sun to the top parts of the ocean. And here plants can absorb that energy, these are microscopic plants. Plants and they store, so they store the sun's energy. Um, energy is measured in joules, which we symbolize with a J. And an example then would be just say that an algae can store 100 joules of energy. Well, other things can eat that algae then, fish, whales, other marine uh, wildlife and eat the algae. And they obviously eat a lot more than one. So they eat many algae. So these would store energy also. And they would store even more energy because they're eating lots of algae. So a fish could store maybe a thousand joules. Now, why are these things important? Well, ancient versions of this, uh, obviously lived and died. So ancient marine plants and animals would have lived and died. And when they die, they fall to the seabed. The seabed is just the bottom of the ocean. So when they form it, when they, uh, when they die, they fall to the bottom and they collect here you know, like this. Okay. So over millions of years, the layers of them build up and we get more and we get more and we get more. But what also builds up is not just the dead plants and animals, but also we get deposit, deposits of minerals and mud and silt and clay um, on top. And we call this, we call this sediment, sediment. So this is deposited minerals and clay and rock. And over millions of years, millions of years, the layers of dead plants and animals and the layers of uh, sediment build up on the ocean bed. What happens then is that underneath the ocean bed, you have the Earth's core, which is very hot. The Earth's core will be heating the dead plants and animals from underneath heat. But also, the sediment and the ocean will be putting weight on the dead plants and animals, and they will be squashing them. They will be turning them from this size into this size. We call this compressing. So squashing them. Okay, so over time, dead plants and animals become compressed. And with all this compression and all this heat, the dead plants and animals turn in to a thick black liquid. And this thick black liquid is called crude oil. 
Okay, it's called crude oil. Now we call crude oil a fossil fuel because it comes or it's made by fossils. Fossils are the remains of dead things. Okay, the key thing about crude oil is it's still storing the energy that the plants and animals once had, particularly the plants when they uh, were able to trap the energy from the sun up here in the plants. And we know this process, if you've studied biology, it's called photosynthesis. They're able to trap the sun's energy. Well, when they die and they fall to their seabed, if they don't decay, they remain storing this energy. The crude oil is what we call a mixture. Now from junior start, you should know what a mixture is. What is a mixture? Say the answer out loud now. I am hoping that you said that a mixture is where you have two or more substances that are mixed or jumbled together, but they're not chemically combined. It's a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons, and we're gonna see more about these hydrocarbons later. The final thing is that because this process over here takes millions of years, the sediment and the dead plants and animals uh, to build up, that means it, these things, this crude oil cannot be easily replenished. It cannot be easily replenished or replaced. Okay, so it's not like we can just wait another 20 years or another 100 years and there'll be loads more crude oil. If we take this crude oil out, then there's not going to be any more for millions and millions of years. We say it cannot be easily re replenished. And the word we use to describe this is we say it is non-renewable. It is non-renewable. Now humans have realized that if we take this crude oil, or if we find where we've got a big store of it under the ocean bed, and um, we can then, at the surface, we can build a drill. So it's a specialized drill. And what the drill does is to drill down into the seabed and basically suck the crude oil up and out of the seabed. It then moves and gets stored. And we usually store this in big metal containers called barrels. So our crude oil is in our barrels and our crude oil to describe it in more detail is first of all, it is a dark black substance. It is dark black. It is a viscous liquid. The word viscous means that it flows very slowly, flows slowly. So think of something like honey. Honey does not flow as quickly as water. It is more viscous than water. So something which flows slowly is viscous. Uh, crude oil is even more viscous than honey, much slower to flow than honey. And what it is, is it's a mixture of substances called hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons, if we break this word down, hydro refers to hydrogen. And carbon refers to carbon. So hydrocarbons are substances or compounds that are made of hydrogen and carbon only. So only hydrogen and carbon. Okay, it's time, you're, you, it's time to do some practice now. Hopefully you understand how crude oil is formed and how humans take crude oil and store it and what crude oil is like, what it, what, how we describe it. Um, so it's time now to do some practice questions. So in a second, I'm gonna put up the questions, but before I do, how do I want you to do these? I want you to do these in your practice copy. It's really, really important that when I put them up, you pause the video and you try all the questions and you don't play the video again until you've actually tried to do all the questions. 
So I'm going to put up the questions on the screen now. Okay, so this is the first question. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video. I want you to write out the full paragraph and try and fill in each of the gaps. So again, you should pause the video now and complete that. Now, you should only be listening to my voice again if you have tried these questions. Okay, if you have tried this question, you've written out the paragraph and fill in the gaps. I'm gonna put up the answers now. Okay, uh, so when I put up the answers, I want you to compare them to your own. If you got any of them wrong, now is your chance to fix them. Okay, so this is what the paragraph should look like when it's completed. So I'll just let you read that to yourselves and fix any of the ones you had wrong. Okay, hopefully that hopefully you got that fully right. Um, there, I don't think there's anything too difficult in there. There's nothing new. We've explained all of that. Okay. So again, I'm going to put up another set of questions now. I'd like you to pause the video and try these questions, please. Okay, and a reminder, you should only be now listening to my voice if you have tried to answer all of those questions. We're going to quickly review them now. So you need a red pen and let's get correcting. So what is crude oil made from? It's made from, it is made from ancient plants and animals. Okay, it is made from ancient plants and animals. How long does crude oil take to form? It takes many millions of years. So not a hundred years, not a thousand years, many, many millions of years. Where do we find crude oil? We find crude oil under the seabed, okay? Not every sea will have this. It's usually tropical seas, warm seas, um, where a lot of sediment forms and a lot of uh, algae and plant material can grow in the top layers of the ocean. What covers dead organisms on the seabed? Uh, that would be sediment. Well done if you got that right. How do dead organisms become crude oil? Okay, so you should mention here that we have the heat from the core warms up the dead plants and animals. And also uh, we have the pressure or the weight of the sediment on top and the ocean on top of that that compresses and squashes them down. So there's two parts there. Again, you should talk about compression of the sea and the sediment. And you should also talk about heat from the Earth's core. Why is crude oil non-renewable? Uh, crude oil is non-renewable because it cannot be easily replenished. It takes a long, long time to form. So there's the answers in written form. If you need now, you pause the video and uh, correct any of your answers in red pen. Okay. And well done if you got all of those right. If you didn't get any of those right and you're not sure what I'm talking about, if any of those questions seem really unfamiliar, you need to pause the video and go back and watch the explanation again. Okay. So, uh, now going to um, explain something else. Okay, we're just going to do a little summary now. Okay, so so far, what do we know? We're talking about crude oil. Um, crude oil. Okay, and crude oil is a fossil fuel. What is a fossil fuel? Speak your answer out now, please. Okay, I'm hoping you're say, yeah, you said that fossil fuel is formed from the remains of dead plants and animals or from ancient plants and animals. Um, the word fuel uh, basically means uh, a substance which stores a lot of energy. A chemical which stores a lot of energy and we can usually take these substances and burn them to release or transfer that energy okay so fossil because it's formed from fossils or dead plants and animals and fuel because their substance is storing a lot of energy and what is crude oil it is a mixture a mixture okay and we learned already what a mixture was but just to represent it for us. So if we take uh, this container, and in this container, we have, say, few types of substances. Okay, so here is one type of substance. Hopefully, you can see that those two substances are different substances because they've got different types of atoms in them. We stick another one in. 
as a third substance. And finally, sorry, finally, this is another different type of substance. Okay, so this substance is a, or this, uh, this container is a mixture. It is a mixture because we have different substances. But they are not chemically combined. So each of these is a different substance but they are not chemically combined because if they were, they would be joined, connected together. So these three atoms, these are chemically combined because they're all touching, but this thing here and this thing here, these are not chemically combined. So there is more than one type of substance, but they are not chemically combined. That's what we mean by a mixture. So what type of substances make up the mixture that is crude oil? So it's a mixture of compounds called hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons. What is a hydrocarbon? I want you to speak your answer out now. I hope you said that they are so they're compounds containing hydrogen and carbon only. We saw that already. So hydrogen. and carbon, hydrogen and carbon only. That's what hydrocarbons are. Okay, at this point, what I would like you to do is I'm going to stop and I would like you to try and pause the video and try and recreate that diagram from memory. So pause the video and try and recreate that diagram from memory. Okay, now you should only be watching this video now if you have stopped and tried to recreate that diagram from memory. I'm going to show you this diagram again. And what I want you to do is I want you to make sure yours is the same. If it's not the same, then you need to uh, add the bits that you forgot. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So let's check it out. Make sure you've got all the bits. Okay, and we're just gonna add, make it a little bit more complicated now at the bottom. Okay, so we're gonna add a few more bits. Okay, so again, just watching. I will give you a chance to try and draw it in a second. Now, hydrocarbons can be either what we call aromatic. Now, aromatic basically means they contain this structure. This is a structure a ring made of six carbons. It's shaped like a hexagon, so six sides. Now each point on the hexagon uh, is a carbon atom, okay? And there are hydrogens which are not drawn here, and I'll explain why later, okay? But maybe um, I will also draw out beside it with, this, with the carbon. So we've got carbon, 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 uh, Carbon. Okay, so there is our six carbons in a ring. And there is also this ring structure inside. Okay, and that would be here as well. And we will learn more about this later. But just know that this structure is called a benzene ring. A benzene ring. Okay, now any, any uh, molecule or compound that has this structure in it, the benzene ring, we say is called aromatic. So aromatic means it contains a benzene ring, okay? Aromatic means contains a benzene ring, okay? Now, so the other group then, we call these aliphatic, aliphatic, okay? And these are substances which are, which do not contain the benzene ring. So in other words, they are non-aromatic, non-aromatic, which means no benzene ring. Okay, no benzene ring. 
Now there are three main families of aliphatic hydrocarbons. They are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. Okay, they are alkenes, alkanes, and alkynes. Three families of aliphatic hydrocarbons, which means they do not have a benzene ring. We will study all of these in more detail in the next videos. Now, all of these can be either straight chains, straight chains, like this, so carbon, 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 so straight chain, can be branched, like this, carbon, 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 and a branch on the side. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go over here. Or cyclic. So cyclic, if you think of the word cycle, means round. Cyclic means carbons in a round shape. So kind of like what we had over here with the benzene but it does not have this ring in the middle. So cyclic without that ring in the middle. So it does not have a benzene ring. So al aliphatic hydrocarbons can be uh, examples of alkanes, alkenes and alkynes. And all of these alkanes, alkenes, alkynes can be either straight chain, branched or cyclic, but they do not have a benzene ring. Okay, I'm going to get you to pause the video and see if you can remember, if you can complete the rest of that diagram. Okay, so pause the video. Okay, you should only be watching now if you managed to complete, or have a go at completing that diagram. This is what it should look like. Okay, so our two types of hydrocarbons are aliphatic and aromatic. Aromatic means it contains benzene. Aliphatic does not contain benzene. Then types of aliphatic are alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And these can all be either straight chained, branched, like that, or cyclic, round, but round without the benzene ring. Okay, so carbons can be in a round shape, like six in a round shape, but without the benzene ring. That's the key thing. Okay. Well done if you got all of that right. If you didn't, then pause the video and just add any extra bits that you didn't manage to get. Okay, and now it's gonna be time for some practice. Okay, these are the practice questions. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to try these questions for me now. And practice copy, please, pause the video. And you should only be now watching uh, this video again or listening to my voice if you have completed the questions. Okay, so we're just going to briefly go through the questions now. Red pen for correcting. Okay, and again, either correct it or fix it. Okay, so which of the following represents a mixture? You have three boxes. Hopefully, you went for C. C contains a mixture. B is a compound, and they're all the same. All the pieces are the same. Okay, so each piece is made of three atoms, and they're all the same three groups of three atoms. And A would represent an element because we've just got single atoms and they're all the same. So that would be an element. B is a compound and C is a mixture. Uh, and two, how do you know? We know because we've got, uh, we've got different substances which are in the same container or mingled together, but they are not chemically joined. What is a mixture then? A mixture is uh, different substances mingled together, but not chemically combined or not chemically bonded. Well done if you've got those three right. What elements make up a hydrocarbon? Then we have hydrogen and carbon. Name this structure. So number five, uh, that is a benzene ring. Okay, that is benzene. That's what that's called. Uh, from memory, what do we call compounds which contain this structure? We call them aromatic. From memory, what do we call compounds that do not contain this structure? Aliphatic. The alkenes are a family of hydrocarbons, named the other, oh, sorry, this said, uh, excuse me, uh, it says the alkanes are a family of hydrocarbons, named two other families, alkenes with an E and alkynes with a Y. Okay, well done if you got that right. And define the term hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are compounds which contain carbon 
and hydrogen only. Okay, you have now finished video one. Uh, well done if you uh, got all the answers right in the practice. And if you didn't know there's anything you don't understand, uh, you go back and watch the explanation again. Uh, and I'll see you in the second video.